My name is Barbara Fuller. As chair of the board, I welcome you to this October 18th, 2022 regular meeting of the Washtenaw County Board of Road Commissioners. Aaron, Aaron Smith will now describe how our meetings operate, how to access the agenda packet, and how people may participate remotely. Aaron. There are multiple ways to make public comment during today's meeting, whether you are joining us in person or virtually. If you are here in person and would like to make public comment, please fill out the sign-in sheet now. If you're joining us virtually, we will ask you to virtually raise your hand at the appropriate time in the agenda. If you're joining us virtually, the chat feature on the Zoom meeting is available only as technical support for users on their computer or smartphone. If you're experiencing technical issues with audio or video during the meeting, submit a comment in the chat feature and I will help you troubleshoot. If you're a staff member experiencing issues, please contact the IT Help Desk for assistance. The audio and video of this meeting is being recorded. A link to the video recording will be posted to wcroads.org in the coming days. There are printed copies of today's meeting agenda on the table here and is also posted on wcroads.org. There's a link available in the chat if you're joining us virtually. And I'll turn it over to Chair Barb Fuller. Thank you, Erin. I now call this meeting to order and ask Erin to call the roll. Chair Barb Fuller. Present. Vice Chair Rod Green. Here. Commissioner Douglas Fuller. Present. Um, Commissioner Gloria Yamas has an excused absence. Um, jo Commissioner Joanne McCollum. Present. And the following directors are in attendance. Managing Director Cheryl Siddle. Director of Engineering and County Highway Engineer Matt McDonnell. Director of Operations, Adam Lape, and Director of Finance and IT, Dan Ackerman. Thank you, Aaron. If you would all please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Support. Any adjustments, amendments, corrections, anything at all? Seeing none, Aaron, if you would please call the roll. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. Commissioner Douglas Fuller? Yes. Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. And Commissioner Burt Fuller? Yes. The agenda is adapted. We have one set of minutes to approve today. May I have a motion to accept the board meeting minutes of October 4th, 2022, as presented pages four through 11 of our packet. So moved. I support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Aaron, if you'd please call the roll. Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. Commissioner Douglas Fuller? Aye. And Commissioner Bart Fuller? Yes. Next item on our agenda is public comment. This is the time set aside on the agenda to receive comments from the public. This is not intended to be a period for dialogue. Each person will be allotted three minutes to address the board. Aaron will explain how people may be recognized to offer comments. Aaron? Since this is a hybrid meeting with both in-person and virtual attendees, we will take turns between those attending in-person and virtual. For virtual attendees, we ask that you virtually raise your hand now. If you're viewing this meeting on your computer, first make sure to click join audio. You can ra then raise your hand by clicking the participants or reactions button at the bottom of your screen and then the raise hand button. If you dialed into the meeting from your touch tone phone, raise your hand by dialing star nine. I will unmute virtual participants with raised hands one at a time. I will announce your username or last four digits of your phone number when it is your turn to speak. Please share your name and address before beginning your comments. For in-person attendees, we will start with those of who have signed um, up on the sign-in sheet as you walked in. If you didn't sign in, you are still welcome to make comment. I'll notify you when it's your turn. Thank you. Um, at this time, Commissioner, we do not have anyone that has signed in or has raised their hand to make public comment. All right. Commissioners, do you have anything you want to point out to us in the written communications, which appear on pages 12 through 14? No. no. I see nothing there. Okay. We will uh, move on since there was no public comment. We will forego item number five on our agenda. We have under new business, a consent agenda. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented items one through four, 
background on pages 15 through 44. So move. Support. Anything to comment on? No. Aaron, if you'd please call the roll. Um, Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. Commissioner Douglas Fuller? Aye. And Commissioner Burr Fuller? Yes. Next item, our reports. We'll begin with Commissioner Sanders. Um, Commissioner Sanders is with us. I will let her. All right. Good afternoon. I don't have a report for you. We do have a board meeting scheduled tomorrow. It starts at 530. Um, that's about it. I don't, I don't have anything to report. Good to hear from. I do want to share with you, though, the last meeting that I attended uh, where you had public comment um, regarding a special assessment, I thought was especially um, educational for me regardless of whatever the outcome was, it was just very informative to me about the process um, for residents and for the road commission. So appreciate having that learning opportunity. Appreciate having you with us. You were with us this morning during the working session as well. Thank you for your interest and participation. And I don't will add, me. don't be, I don't want any of your other employees to be offended because I think they all do a great job, but I do believe that your, your communications team is, is uh, spot on. I think they do an excellent job. We agree, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> we will move on to the report of uh, the road commissioners, starting with Commissioner Doug Fuller. Um. Forgive me for not having prepared a written one, but I would comment that the uh, paving uh, that Mr. Burnback was in charge of out there uh, on Cavanaugh Lake Road turned out just wonderful. Thank you. Does that and appreciated by the residents, by the way. <laughs> Does that conclude your report, Commissioner? Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Green. I have no report. Thank you. Commissioner McCollum. Yes. On October 4th, I met with Dan Ackerman to learn about the Road Commission budget. I'm also attending a class at Washtenaw Community College titled Understanding and Managing Budgets. On October 5th, I attended the chat meeting. There were no public attendees. On October 9th through the 11th, I attended the commissioner's seminar, Here Comes Change. And I want to comment on the Grove project in Ypsilanti Township of how well that's going. Um, the road is looks really good. I know it's not done, but it's um, it's almost like uh, I didn't realize what condition it was until it was paved. <laughs> so it's really nice, and it's it's being done in a very timely manner. That's a kind of a long road, so. I appreciate all the work that the Road Commission is doing there. Thank you. Uh, I will report that on October 12th, I served as the commissioner at our weekly chat session, and we had no visitors on that particular day. Next on our agenda are the reports of our managing director and her staff. I will turn it over to Cheryl. The uh, information appears on pages 45 through 62 of our packet. Sure. Thank you. Um, well, I'll start by asking if there's any questions with respect to any of the reports um, and that were included in the board packet. I appreciate the new format. It's, it's really appealing visually and organized in a way that's easily digested. Lots of information there, but presented in a way that is easy to get at. So thanks for that. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, Aaron and Tiffany have been um, looking at the reports that we um, provide, making sure that we're not, you know, taking away from any of the information, but seeing if that there's a better format that we can present it in. So kudos to both Aaron and Tiffany on, on Very that. Very nice. That's their effort. Um, just a couple quick things that I will share. 
Um, thank you for approving the contract with MDOT for the salt storage facility that we'll be having um, on this yard, hopefully starting next year with construction. Um, but as part of that process, um, we will be going for, before the SIO Township Planning Commission and then ultimately the board. Um, and, but we have a meeting later this week on Thursday with staff um, to see if there's any outstanding items on our original submittal and then which planning commission meeting we hope to be on for their agenda and fingers crossed for their approval. So um, we are moving forward with that process. Um, again, hopefully with construction starting next year, bidding and then construction, obviously. Okay. Um, and then just immediately prior to this meeting, um, I did receive an email from Jan Godek, who is the current chair for the Township Supervisors Group. And so she has invited uh, Adam and I to come and speak to their meeting, which is next week, next Thursday. So that would be October 27th. Um, we gladly accepted, or at least I did, and dragged Adam along <laughs> as part of that. <laughs> happy acceptance. Um, and so we'll be happy to report back at the next meeting um, how that goes, which townships are in attendance and what types of questions and whatnot we receive. So I'm pleased to hear that they're convening again. Absolutely. It, it, it's a nice form for us as well, since as we were talking just prior to the meeting, how important those township relationships are, but how diverse of a group they are. So um, it definitely will be interesting to see who's there and what type of questions they have for us but we're looking forward to that. Okay. So um, unless you have any questions for me, I would be happy to turn it over to staff. Yes, Commissioner McCollum. Yeah, I was just wondering when you go to this meeting with the supervisors, do you already have a presentation or do you just go and say, we're here to answer any questions you have? I think that we can do either. I would prefer to go in with at least a few talking points. Um, certainly local roads is usually a topic that is incredibly relevant to the townships and us as well. Um, that is where we often need a partner. And we know that from an asset management perspective, mm -hmm. while we're making slow but steady ground on the primary road system, the local road system is on a very different trajectory. So um, if there's things that we can talk about, funding that might be available, um, it's kind of nice to have that group there, um, especially those if, um, for example, Lodi Township just recently passed a millage. So they have a revenue source that they had not previously had available. Um, and then you've got Sio Township with their uh, township-wide SAD. So it's nice that there's some different models of, of how different townships have felt what was appropriate for their community. Um, and hopefully they can share their experiences with the end goal being that hopefully improvements to the local road system. And then we're all, all in that part of it together. Thank you. Sure. All right. Um, let's see, first up on the agenda then, we have Matt McDonnell, our Director of Engineering. Good afternoon. Good to see you again. Matt McDonnell, Director of Engineering. Uh, just quickly report on a couple of the paving projects. Thank you, Commissioner McCollum, for the compliments on Willow Road. We are uh, pleased to report that paving is complete. Uh, punch list items, and I believe the pavement marking is down as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that same contract has LaForge Road uh, as part of it. We had begun the paving uh, last week, unfortunately, with the weather, the way that it is, with the rain. Uh, and the cool temperatures, it's tough to get dry, especially in milled surface. So I would expect LaForge paving to continue um, on Thursday and hopefully paint to follow shortly thereafter. Uh, meanwhile, we have another contractor working in Ypsilanti Township on Tuttle Hill Road uh, doing some milling uh, with the expectation of paving later this week and into next week. So uh, quickly approaching season's end and wrapping up expected projects. So that's exciting. Uh, we're looking ahead uh, in the month of November, we'll be talking with the board about budgets and projects for next year. So certainly planning those. And uh, a lot of staff is dedicated to uh, looking towards um, getting projects ready for bidding. Um, we also, just to give you a heads up, have had a couple of different inquiries on uh, special assessment districts, uh, one in Dexter Township, two in York Township. So staff is meeting and talking with, uh, I will say the community champions 
uh, that, that we're looking to find out information, making them aware of the process, potentially uh, giving them petition information. And also we uh, offer up the, the ability to go meet with them um, during a weeknight uh, so that they can be well informed of the process before it actually starts. So uh, with that, uh, any questions on any material in the board packet or anything on your mind? I don't see anything. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks, you, Matt. Matt. Next up, we have Dan Ackerman, our Director of Finance and IT. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Dan Ackerman, Director of Finance and IT. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, appreciate the board approving the union contract at the last board meeting. And that meant that had the finance department hopping. As a matter of fact, as soon as you approve that, I, I sent a team's message to Tracy Balkwell, who handles our payroll, because there were some things that were triggered right when you approved it. Um, and ever since, she's been busy with rate changes, with setting up comp time, with uh, changes for the MERS uh, pension contributions. We want to make sure that now that we have this contract in place, that we have implemented it properly. So um, I think we're on the, the home stretch with a lot of it, um, but um, it's something that we and, and definitely Tracy takes very seriously. And, you know, again, you know, if you have this contract with all these changes and they're not, they're not uh, implemented, that could be problematic, as you can imagine. So, um, and Tracy did a great job. We, we worked together, Cheryl. Uh, HR as well as a, a team effort just to make sure that uh, we're abiding by the contract and all the changes that were made. When was the first pay check after the contract was approved? So the first paycheck will be a week from tomorrow. So it was effective. 26th. It was effective the Thursday. Well, anything related to paychecks was uh, the Thursday after the board meeting. Oh, okay. with the exception of. Uh, um, compensatory time yep. um, was immediate. And I, there could be other things I could be missing, Cheryl. Yeah, you're uh, correct. The, from a pay perspective and for the MERS contributions, those took effect the first full pay period after signing, which that <clears throat> started um, Thursday, October 6th, and would run through this coming Wednesday. This Wednesday, right. So they will receive that next week. And then as Dan indicated, comp time became immediately effective. Um, and these guys, I mean, kudos to them. They scrambled to get that up so that we actually had somebody on Tuesday yes. work some overtime and select comp time in lieu of overtime. Mm -hmm. um, so it was with great pleasure that we provided that, but not without a little bit of work on it, on especially yes. these guys. And again, it was nice just to have the tools for me to be able to have my laptop and send a message to Tracy. Certainly, we talked about all these things prior to the board meeting, assuming, and we can't make assumptions, but if the board were to approve the contract, there's a lot of setup she had to do um, for that comp time to make sure it was available um, because that's part of the contract. And if it if it's not available, you know, there, there could be some issues. So, sure. um, and I want to say that was for like 70 employees. She had to set that up. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure it was ready by the end of the day. And it was, and like Cheryl said, we had at least one person that selected comp time instead of overtime. So, huh. so it went, uh, so far it's going well, but it was just a, a heavy lift. And uh, it's the first contract approval that Tracy's been through as, as payroll, doing payroll and, um, there's certainly a lot to it, but she did a great job. So, was Lori in charge of it? Lori Hackbarth yeah. was was her predecessor, correct? Okay. Yep. Um, besides that, and I know Barb and I had a few emails about this. The the state activity code change, which is a fairly major change for our agency. Happy to report, everything seems to be up and running, and the state will should more than likely pay us for our October bill once we get that submitted. Um, cause that, that's where the effective date is. That's MDOT's new fiscal year. Right. Um, but we've, we feel like we're in a, a pretty good spot and there, there could be some hiccups with the first billing or two, but, um, we feel like we implemented things, um, to the point where, you know, the, the state should accept our bill and we're using their, their proper codes and we've trained staff and, 
um, we should be good to go, which is nice. Yes, Commissioner McCullum. Yeah, why do they change it? <laughs> that, that's a million dollar question. <laughs> I'll, I'll defer to Mr. Lake. No, I'm kidding. Um, I think one of the things, so some of the changes, some were just annoying, quite frankly, like it, it doesn't seem like a lot, but they went from a three digit number to a four digit number, which throws the whole system off. But anyway, um, one of the changes they did is, um, so surface maintenance used to be code 109. Instead of surface maintenance, they have several more detailed descriptions as far, you know, and, and I, don't, I don't recall the, the exact details. So almost like subcategories, like they're trying to, to be more specific, you know, not just surface maintenance, but, you know, are, are you, what, what type of surface maintenance are you doing? So they broke that down into several categories. Um, and so there were a couple of areas that they, they broke those down um, in more detail, I guess. But my question is, will they be budgeting by all these details? We have we have a hard enough time getting a budget from them to begin with, which, by the way, we, we've not received it in their fiscal year started October 1. Um, so, you know, we we can't we can't open our doors technically if we don't have a budget in place prior to January 1. Somehow they can maybe because the overall state government has a budget, I guess. And, you know, they're included with that, but like specific to our agency, um, you know, we don't have a, an official budget for the, from them yet, but I inquired and they said, yes, we're going to be budgeting by all these line items. You know, let's say there are 20 line items. Now there might be 30 and each line item will have a, a particular budget. So, so I think they just wanted maybe more details. A lot of times it's the folks in Lansing that, that call the shots and our, our representatives locally will say, we, we don't know. We don't necessarily even agree with it. We're just being told what what they're doing so sometimes they have input sometimes they don't um but it's our goal to make sure we can comply as best we can so thank you mm -hmm. and that was done administratively not legislatively right correct yeah i don't know did you hear any background behind any of these changes or uh, adam late director of operations no i didn't hear any reasoning for it uh the crew, myself, the superintendents, Dan, Cheryl, Matt, and I, only thought we have at this point is just with some of the deteriorating road surface with, you know, surface maintenance in general, trying to actually budget for what type of work we're doing. Is it this type of material or is it concrete? Is it asphalt? Is it Dura Patcher, which is a type of unit we would use to kind of spray patch? You know, they, they got very, very far down into the specifics of it. So other than just maybe accuracy, trying to track where they're spending their money with surface maintenance itself. Um, that's kind of the only thing we've touched on just because we know the road surfaces here in the county are some of them are challenged, uh, compromised a little bit. So uh, we spend plenty of time in our surface maintenance category. So it's kind of how we've researched it. But other than that, no one's actually told us any different why they kind of changed. So no news is okay. Yeah. They set things up <laughs> right. <laughs> And I know I received several frantic calls from other road commissions, my peers at other road commissions. How, how are you doing this? How are you setting it up? So we spent a lot of time uh, collaboratively with, uh, with Jamie in finance, with Adam, with uh, Tim Hackbarth, who is our state trunk line foreman, just talking about, you know, at first they had like 50 numbers. And we said, boy, that, you know, that, that's a lot. Are we really going to use all 50 of these uh, activity codes? And so Tim met with his counterpart with the Brighton TSC, the, the local MDOT reps that we deal with, and they, they trimmed that down quite a bit. So let, let's talk about what we're actually going to use. But, um, but yeah, I, I received several calls from peers. How are we handling it? There were some listserv questions. I know Cheryl's like, what the heck is all this stuff <laughs> talk about all the changes with the trunk line and activity codes? Um, but, but it took a lot of thought to make sure that we we had a good game plan in place. And it doesn't seem like much, right? They're just changing numbers, but it's it's kind of a big deal um, for our finance staff, as well as you know any of our uh, folks that work on the trunk lines as well. We just wanna make sure that um, we're approaching it smartly. So, and I think, I think we're in a good spot, but I'll let you know after we submit the October billing in early November, so. <clears throat> Besides that, um, I, I'm, Glad to hear uh, other folks talking budget because because that's going to be our next focus. Um, so, 
Commissioner McCollum, anytime if you want to uh, meet again on it, now's a great time because we'll be, um, I always feel a little behind at this time of the year that I feel I should be further along with the budget, but I'm waiting for some numbers, right? I mean, we're still in the middle of October. We try and have good numbers through the end of October and we estimate November and December for this year's budget. And then we'll have also have a 2023 budget. So I get a little impatient, but you know, time has to pass in order for all those numbers to flow through our system. And then we can have, uh, we can finalize it. Of course, we're looking at it. We're setting up files. We can meet on projects. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do ahead of time, um, but, but it's a lot. So I think I always feel a little behind about this time. And I think this might be one of the earliest that we'll be presenting the budgets to you. Just the way the calendar works, it'll be November 15th. Okay. which is awfully early um, to try and have good numbers through October. But, um, you know, we've got good systems in place, so we'll, we'll get there. But um, that will definitely be a big focus of mine and has been and will continue to be. So, um, and then as far as IT, uh, we had a great meeting with our managed service provider. And um, I told Chris, um, just just the, the, the gentleman, his name's Dean, um, from our managed service provider, um, the conversations between him and Chris and Josh, I always learn a lot. So it's always uh, great just to get them in the same room and 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 just listen to the things that they talk about. Um, you know, some takeaways. I feel like uh, our hardware and software we're in a pretty good spot with with just about everything. Talked a lot about security. We have some really good security in place right now. Um, so you know, I feel like we're in a good spot. You don't want to rest on your laurels, though. Um, and from these meetings, you always have some to-do lists, both from the managed service provider. They have some things to, to look at. Uh, we had some things to look at. Knowing Chris, they're probably already completed because he's always like right on right on everything. It's amazing, actually. Probably after, right after the meeting was over, he he just jumped on all the his to-do list. But um, so, yeah, I mean, some takeaways are, you know, we're, we're in a really good spot, like I said, with hardware and software. Um, but we continue to look forward. So there's there's some things that we need to think about as well. And and speaking of looking forward, tomorrow, Chris, Josh, and I have a cybersecurity seminar put on by SEMCOG. SEMCOG, um, I, I believe. So I've been here almost 28 years. I don't think I've ever participated in a SEMCOG webinar before. So this will be kind of interesting. I'll be interested how, you know, just how they handle the presentation. But, you know, that's just one example that, you know, we feel like we're in a good place, but we can always learn more. And unfortunately, those that are trying to commit harm or, or do damage, um, you know, they're they're always learning and coming up with innovations too. So, um, so that'll be uh, an interesting uh, seminar, and I'll definitely report back on that. Um, also, Josh, he's just about done with the uh, the computer refreshes. Now he's working on the the CMAC refreshes. Um, Chris and I met yesterday and I went into Josh's area and there were like four laptops there. He's already going strong on those to get those out to our uh, engineering folks. Um, and also for room 106, we mentioned there's going to be some audio visual similar to room 234. Um, that, okay, okay, where's 106? By the permits area okay. over here. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the equipment actually was was all received by the vendor. Hmm. And they're working on setting that up. And Chris, Josh, and I will be going out there to, to receive a demo. And the goal is that everything is up and running there. And you can bring it to the road commission. And it should work the way we, we hope it does. So that'll be interesting to see um, how that demo goes. And that's all I have, unless there's any questions. I don't have any questions. OK, great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dan. You. Yeah. And last but not least, we have Adam Lape, our Director of Operations. Good afternoon. Uh, Adam Lape, Director of Operations. Uh, real quick on the MDOT activity codes we were talking about. A, a true thank you to Dan and his staff. Uh, it was good through the experience because challenging as it was, nice for a foreman, superintendents, myself, to voice kind of some of the concern, what the employees thought they might need or run into while they're working, and kind of get that information to Dan. So he had accurate information to make requests for certain changes with the state. You know, he was able to send a few emails when we were kind of in that planning process where he had good boots on the ground experience to speak of as opposed to just trying to speak of just general. We were able to give specifics. So 
it's a huge thank you to them. It'll make this process easier in the long run, even though a little challenging to start, but we do appreciate Dan and his group helping us with that. So I just wanted to kind of put that on the record for everybody. So did MDOT accommodate your suggestions? I think we had one change to limit some of the, I think Dan can guys speak on this, to limit a few of the surface maintenance where we don't need eight Simplify or 10. Simplify a little bit. Yeah, a little simplification. If, if I may, um, one of the main codes that our foreman uses for field supervision was not a part of their new coding structure. And I said, well, what, what the heck does our, you know, supervision use now when they're on the trunk line roads? They said, oops, um, oh yeah, I use this number. So, hmm. um, you know, that, that was kind of an important thing that was missing and, and they, they did work with us, but sometimes the communication wasn't great, I'll be honest, with the state. No. <laughs> yeah, we're we're thankfully a little quicker to the draw sometimes. So that's okay. We're we're in line and as a team, so that's good and kind of leave that on them to kind of figure out from there. But for my update, uh, remaining limestone projects uh, continue throughout the county, uh, focusing primarily on District 3 right now, and then we'll focus on District 1. Mm -hmm. And then we have some small tonnage projects in District 2 and 6. So we'll keep those going in just a few gravel projects, 22A gravel projects in District 4 remaining. And these mostly are small tonnage items. So uh, winter dry run continues, uh, heavy equipment, some District 1 equipment, facilities, and shop uh, equipment. That's all that remains. So we've done the vast majority of our group. We've inspected most of our equipment. Uh, we just have probably 10, 15 items yet to inspect. So we're, we're ahead of schedule and hopefully uh, ahead of Mother Nature. Um, she seems as though she's bringing snow closer to us every day. So we're uh, a little bit conscious of that. Um, our night patrol group, uh, four member night patrol group for the state trunk line, we probably will start them. Uh, we just got confirmation today the state would like us to start them the week before Thanksgiving. So somewhere around the 20th of November. Uh, that's kind of fresh as today. So we'll be moving that group into shifts just to make sure we're prepared and somewhat seamless and working the same as MDOT starts their shifts. And routine maintenance will fill the remainder of the season. Uh, shoulder maintenance, some minor drainage improvements, and uh, any needed forestry work that we've kind of ran across in the summer actually doing the maintenance side of things uh, that unfortunately gets put on hold a lot of times because we have to do our project work. So uh, we're a little excited about that. It's, it's uh, good for the crews to get a chance out and actually take care of the things they've ran across throughout the year. So that's going to fill the remainder of our schedule, and hopefully that four-letter word snow stays away for a little yeah. while. For a few and, more weeks. Yeah, at least, please. Um, so that's all I have for my updates, unless anybody has any other questions. I don't see any. All right, thank you. Thanks, Adam. Thank you, Adam. That's all it from staff. Commissioner McCollum. Um, I was talking to a resident in between lunches, and they had come to, they had uh, been on the early meeting. The working session? Working session. Yeah. And they uh, complimented on how well the meeting was run and the information and everything. They thought it was really awesome. Good. Glad to hear. Thank you once again to so communications. Everyone now, we're Check doing, that. everyone's doing a great job. Mm -hmm. Good, 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 good. We play well together too, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so that helps too. Um, I'd like to note that on November 1st, that's our next regular board meeting. We only have a regular board meeting that day, so we will convene at 1 o'clock on November 1st. Our virtual chat sessions, which occur every Wednesday from noon to 1, tomorrow, Commissioner Doug Fuller will be in the chair, and on September 12th, Commissioner Joanne McCollum will take charge of that session. If there is no further business to come before the board, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Support. Any discussion? Aaron, if you would please call the roll. Commissioner Joanne McCollum? Yes. Commissioner Rod Green? Yes. Commissioner Douglas Fuller? Aye. And Commissioner Burt Fuller? Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.